As you may recall from our last tutorial on creating a velocity tracking plotting website, the data last week was way too much. It scrolled off the screen. So what I'd like to do this week is clean it up a bit and have it go from at bat to at bat to showing inning by inning accumulated results. Now in order to do that what I'd first like to do is duplicate the project that we had started last week. So CP minus R, VT1, VT2. Um, I prefer to use a command line for doing this sort of thing. You're welcome to use uh, Finder or File Explorer, whatever you wish. I don't really care for GUI tools for this sort of thing. Um, once it's copied, we go into VT2, where we're going to be working today. And we start up our simple HTTP server. Run that in the background so that if we were to reload what we had done, velocitytracker.html on the local host, there we have it. Way too much data. So since that was a lot of data, and if you look at the data file uh, that's called Tanaka Masahiro Velos.csv. You'll see that we have batter, pitch number, and the speed in our data. So, what I've done is I've added another column for innings to the data file. However, we first need to fetch it. So, w get HTTP colon slash slash www dot Japanese baseball dot com slash data slash Tanaka Masahiro Velos dot CSV. Again, you can use your browser to fetch this and do a save as. And if you use something like wget you will notice that it does not uh, overwrite the file. It saves it with a dot one appended to the file name. And this is handy, so now we can say head Tanaka Masahiro asterisk. And you see that the old file has batter pitch and speed. The new file has batter pitch speed and inning. And if we examine the new file, then you will see that batter number one is always in the first inning, batter number two is always in the first inning, batter number three is always in the first inning, and batter number four we alternate uh, second inning, first inning, second inning, first inning. Please keep in mind, these are each batter of a different game. So we go all the way down through batter number 40. And that's uh, always been in the ninth inning. So what we're going to do now is move the new Tanaka Masahiro Velos.csv.1 to Tanaka Masahiro Velos.csv. If we list the files, we now only have one CSV file. Okay, let's reload the velocity tracker and voila! It's all still the same. 
Why is it all still the same? Because we haven't done anything with this innings column. So, the first thing we want to do is update the innings or the data so that the innings column is being accessed. To do that, we go into our new VT2 directory. We take the velocity tracker HTML file, open it up in a text editor, and scroll down to where you see csv.foreach function. Okay, now as you may recall from last time, this is where the data actually gets read in the for each function, reading it in line for line, starting from the second line of the file, as the first line of the file denotes the um, column names. And with the column names, the variable name for each row, or in each row. So, last time we didn't really look and see what this did, and I would like to correct that issue now. First of all, we have a variable e. The variable e is taking uh, x dot batter minus 1. Now, first of all, what is e representing? Well, you may recall that before we had the morley.csv file that we were basing this off of, and the very first column was expt. So the e is really for the exception? Is that what that's for? Um, but what we really want it to be is i for inning. Now what about this minus 1? Why is there a minus 1 there? Well, how is E being used? And I'd like to change these E's to I's now. Okay, the I now is now an index number to the data array. Now, as you all know who, because I'm sure you all are JavaScript gurus, Arrays in JavaScript are zero-based. That is, the very first index is zero. So, because innings are base one and arrays are base zero, we're subtracting one from the index to get the first array value to be put into data. So that's that's good. Now, R in the Morley Morley.csv file was for the run number. And here we change it to pitch number. However, if you look at the rest of the program, this value R is never used. So this is obviously not necessary. Finally, S is for speed. And so we, each time it goes through a row, it now gets the inning subtracts 1 to get the index, gets the speed, it gets the array that we are um, initializing right now, and puts that into the D variable. If Now if this particular array for inning number 1, index 0 the first time through, does not yet exist, it initializes the data array index 0 with the value of s as an array. So we're really initializing an array of arrays in this loop here. If the array does exist for the line we're on, then d.push s will basically add the new speed to the indexed array that we're working with. Got that? Yes, there's a great deal of indirection going on here. But this really shows the power of data-driven documents. And I'd really like to emphasize that. 
This is where we initialize all of the data for the graphs that we're building. Okay, and now that we have the speeds put into the array, let's see how this works. Save the document, come back up to the browser, reload, and voila! We have everything fitting on a single screen. That'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten innings. And as I recall, Makun has thrown at least one ten inning uh, no decision game over the past four years. Oh, did I mention? This data covers the past four years of pitches. So we now see a lot of pitches in a very small area. Now, one thing I had to do there was count the number of innings. It sure would be nice if I could just see the inning number at a glance. So let's do that. Let's add a inning label over each of these bar charts. To do that, we go into our code, and here where we are adding the SVG layer and the group, the group gets is adding the chart. So for each chart, I want to add a label on top. To do that, we append text element. To the text element, we want to set some attributes. For example, on the x-axis, we want it to be centered. So we'll give it a, we'll put the x at the location of width divided by 2. That will center the text in the output. We want the y to be at the top, so that would be 0. We want the text anchor to be middle. This is what is responsible for centering it. And I'd like to style it a little bit. Font size of 12 pixels and I'd like it to be bold so we have the font weight bold and then for the text uh, let's see I want to say what inning it is but for the meantime let's just say nth inning Okay, now let's save that and reload. There we have it. We have labels. But if you'll notice, the label is overlapping the top of the chart. Now that's not a very good way of displaying a label. So let's come back to our source and as you may recall we have a margin let's increase the top margin to 30 and save reload and it's still overlapping hmm that's interesting so let's see what's going on here to really see what's going on, let's open up the developer tools. I'm using Chrome. This is available in uh, Safari, and Firebug has always been really good in Firefox as well. Um, what we have here is the body, and each of the box charts has been added as an SVG canvas. So, if we go to this one here, 
and we start drilling down inside it, we have a group which is translated 5030. Now, what does that mean? That means that the group that we are currently working with, where you can group together a number of different SVG items, has been moved 30 pixels to the right, and, or 50 pixels to the right, and 30 pixels down. So, looking at how the highlighted area changes between the SVG area and the G area, you can see that nth innings is at the very top, just as we said it should be. So it looks like what we need to do to move this text up is to change the Y to something like negative 15. And if we do that, that looks pretty good. So let's do that in our application. So we've added the text. Y, instead of being 0, make it minus 15. Save. Reload. And all of the inning indicators have been moved up 15 pixels and off of the uh, chart. So now, what do we need to do to get this nth from displaying? Hmm. Well, to figure this out, a good place to start is the API reference for D3. This is available at github.com slash m-b-o-k-s-t-o-c-k slash d3 slash wiki slash capital api hyphen capital r and then reference or reference so it's the api reference to the d3 uh, the link of course is from available from the d3js.org site so what i want to find out is how to make a call to t text using the data. So if we look at uh, selection text, uh, this will create um, or put text into the document. And the second paragraph in its description says, if value is specified, sets the text content to the specified value on all selected elements. If value is a constant, which is what we have here, then all elements are given the same text content. Otherwise, if value is a function, then the function is evaluated for each selected element in order, being passed the current datum D and the current index I with the, this context as the current DOM element. Now, there are several samples here, and if we go and look at data, there is an example where a table is drawn from data. Again, we're data driven. And here, the text function is passed a closure function within it. And this takes the format function D, return D. So it's returning the data for that particular um, cell of a table. And if you look at data function up at the beginning of this definition, you'll see that it has two potential va variables, values and key. Key is the index of the values in the array that is being passed. So, instead of saying text nth inning, 
we can say let's see here text function d comma i begin uh, return i plus uh, th inning save that go back to our velocity tractor reload and we have an error because I forgot to put in the end bracket for our function save reload and we have the zero thinning, one thinning, two thinning, three thinning. Ooh, this is bad. Um, I think what I need here is a function that kind of pretty prints a number. So function nth value begin Uh, if value mode 100 greater than 3 and value mode 100 less than 21 return value plus th else if value mode 10 is exactly 1 return value plus st else if value percent or mode 10 is exactly 2 return value plus nd else if value mode 10 is exactly 3 return value plus erd else return value plus th okay so what's this doing well this is basically taking the numbers 11 12 and 13 out of our later um, checks and making all of the numbers between 4 and and 20 inclusive with a th value mode 10 exactly 1 we add the st prefix and because we've already eliminated 11 in the previous line it's not a problem and of course with the uh, mode 100 we can handle uh, 111th 1011th etc same with 2 being every being end second for everything but 12 and the same for 3 being third for everything other than 13 which was taken out there and anything else ends with a th so now I needed to have one added to it because that was not good having a zeroth inning. We can erase the hard-coded th there, save, reload, and oops, I didn't call the nth function. Call the nth function with i plus one, save, reload, first inning, second inning, third inning, fourth inning, all the way up to 10th inning. So Makun has thrown 10 innings, which we can see at a glance. And we're running out of time this time, so I'd like to just show you one more aspect of data-driven documents, which can be very useful. Now, all of the speeds here are in kilometers per hour. So for the metric impaired, we can divide by 1.6, save that, reload, and instantly we have all of the velocities in miles per hour. Isn't that handy? So Makun 
average or hits a high of 95 to 96 miles per hour. He's throwing a low of 71 to 74 miles per hour each inning, um, except for the tenth inning, which in which he really turns on the power. I'm guessing he doesn't throw so many change-ups that late in the game. And he's averaging, I'd say, about uh, 86 to 88 miles per hour throughout the bulk of the game. And he's maintaining that average even in the 10th inning. So, with that, I'm going to end this podcast. I'd like to thank you all for joining me. Take care.